Hey everybody and welcome back to another weekly upload. Today is a special video. I have been wanting to bring this to you guys for maybe a month or two so far. Um, it's been a lot in the making, so I can't wait to make it and show you guys what we have. But today we're going to be doing a video on the history of the Phantom Vacuum Cleaner Company. Um, this has been uh, a pet project that I've been working on on the side, trying to get some things together and information straight and squared away. Um, it has been uh, challenging at times just because there really isn't a whole lot of information other than going through things like the like old JC Penney's catalogs and old newspaper clippings to find years and everything. So I do hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, Big, big thank you to Jared Martinson, uh, because without him, we could not make this video. I have uh, a few phantoms to go over with you here in my little shop. Uh, and then he actually has a couple that he wanted to uh, make a part of the video as well. So we will include some run demos from him. So without further ado, let's get on to the video for today. All right, so to kind of go off of the phantom history, we really have to start with a vacuum that's not even a vacuum. Uh, which is this right here. So what we're looking at is a Kenmore badged uh, dry tech uh, carpet cleaning and shampooing uh, unit. Um, for those that don't know what these are, essentially they're not a vacuum, but they do operate a very much similar to one. Um, now, early 80s would have been where you would have seen early James Dyson machines, and he was looking to uh, bring things over to the United States. Uh, after a debacle with Amway and their uh, CMS 1000, James Dyson wasn't uh, too keen on working with them. Uh, so he uh, was turned to by Iona. Uh, Iona is a Canadian company. Uh, they were famous for a lot of other things. They made mixers and all kinds of different appliances and whatnot. Um, but they wanted to take over some of his patents. So um, in came this and I'll show a patent for it right here. As you can see, virtually the same machine. Um, this is just has a Kenmore badging on it. Now the dry tech was meant to be uh, something to use with a dry sham carpet shampoo, hence dry tech. Um, there was also the same version labeled as the Phantom Capture or the Iona Nova Dry. Not sure where the Nova Dry came in. It was the, you know, 80s, 90s time frame. So big zing words were being put in front of everything. So, um, but the Phantom Capture and the Dry Tech operated with a reverse polarity motor. So the motor could go either directions by switching the switch up here. This switch goes all the way up and it goes all the way down. So essentially you'd fill this tank right here full of capture powder. Capture powder is still actually made today. So um, if you have one of these machines, you could technically still operate it. But I wouldn't recommend it because these were known for breaking. And these were known for being thrown away because the parts broke uh, and you couldn't replace them. So I've had this one in my collection for quite some time now. Um, big, big fan of it. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting machine. It's quirky. Um, but it is a James Dyson patent, which would make this uh, one of the very first Dyson-related products in the United States. So with that, we're going to move on to another machine. Okay, so now we're into more vacuum related content. Now, this particular upright would have come out a little bit later. However, um, if we go back in time a little bit sooner than that, Johnson Wax and Floor Products wanted to sell a vacuum, specifically in the commercial sector. Um, so they came to James Dyson, who came up with uh, and let them use his patents for a new upright. And I'll show a picture of actually one of James Dyson's prototypes that is very similar to this looking machine. As you can see, we're getting a little bit reminiscent. So James Dyson, as well as Johnson Wax, came out with this particular machine, the Vectron.
as you can see, it looks very similar to this. Now, unfortunately, the Vectron would end up not being sold very well. Not a lot of people have them. If you did, it was usually in a commercial setting. Very few have been found, which leads us into the Phantom. So Iona diverged into their own vacuum cleaners and whatnot. So they had other Iona branded vacuum products. Um, one being uh, the Nova Dry that we just talked about, as well as they had a hand vac and a few other things. Um, but they decided to release something called the Iona Domestic. Uh, the Iona Domestic essentially was this exact same machine. Um, it had uh, some white bumpers and white handle grips and whatnot like that. But overall, you know, it uh, was very similar to what would become Phantom. Now, not long after that, Phantom would be their designated brand name for vacuum cleaners. That would start with the Phantom Domestic, which that name ran essentially unofficially for uh, at least three or four years. Um, they ran from about 90 to 90 four-ish, um, which is kind of where this one comes in. The earliest of those had the same gray bumpers uh, and gray handles and whatnot like that, um, but they did have features that were very Dyson-like, like the handle on these comes off just like a Dyson would. Um, and uh, I will demonstrate that, or at least show how that's demonstrated uh, in an ad in just a bit. Um, but first, before I get on to that, the uh, one thing I did want to mention was Kenmore also through their hat in the ring. Now, if you remember, the Kenmore Dry Tech that I just talked about was sold in, Ken in Sears catalogs. Now, Sears thought it was a gimmick and, would, it, and that it wouldn't sell. Uh, well, Sears was wrong. Uh, the Dry Tech ended up selling and it sold quite well, um, which kind of opened the door for Iona to bring in Phantom products for them. Now, Kenmore always wanted their name on things. So Kenmore had what they called the Destiny. Uh, which would lead on to a couple other machines, but the Kenmore Destiny upright was essentially the Phantom domestic based upright. It had no HEPA filter. Um, it did have the gray accents all over the place. Um, so essentially it was the same as a Phantom. All down to it. Iona made them for them. It was all good. Uh, Jared Martinson also has one of these, and I'll show a picture of his right here. And we will get a demonstration of that one um, a little bit later in the video. But uh, anyways, we're going to get on to this one. Now, this is another one of Jared's. Now, this one is an 11 amp uh, Phantom Domestic. Uh, essentially, this one would have been, it would have came out, and it is dated 1994. It came out in the uh, JCPenney catalogs as well. Um, but if you notice, this doesn't have a filter on the side, like normal Phantom Thunders. Um, now, that was an option at this time, so you didn't have to get the filter when you ordered it, but uh, I know they, uh, they did recommend it, of course, it was a selling point on the machine, but uh, that's why I figured I'd keep it off. Of course, the Thunder filter would have looked a lot like this, you would have put your HEPA filter in there, um, but I figured it looked better off of it, so that is uh, the 11 amp domestic. So let's get on to the next one. Now this is the Phantom Fury. These would have came out in about 1995. They're kind of the budget option to the Phantom Thunder. The Thunder, of course, being more high-end at the time because it had a little bit more features. However, the Fury uh, still featured the Dyson Cyclone design that the others use. Um, still had a HEPA filter on the side, still had all of the attachments, uh, as well as the disconnecting wand. Um, and I'll show an ad for one of these in the newspaper, actually, to show kind of what these were, uh, how these were displayed. As you can see, this one actually has a 12 amp motor. These would have come out, this was probably a year or two into the Phantom production line. Um, they started with a, a 10 amp motor as well. Um, so uh, of course they still had headlights and height adjustments and everything you would have gotten with a regular Phantom. But uh, uh, this one is a really cool little machine. They have become kind of desirable. I think Phantom Thunders tended to be more prevalent within, uh, you know, buyers. So very cool little machine though. 
have this I got on trade to Jared, so I'm really happy that I was able to snag this. Um, in terms of compatibility, I've been told these are similar um, to the Dyson DC-03. If you turned them sideways, DC-03s kind of looked sideways to these. I don't know. That's just kind of what I've been told. But these are really cool little machines. I'm really happy to have one of these. Um, so let's get on to the next one in the set. Now this next one, it's a little hard to see and I apologize for that. But these being all black vacuum cleaners, it can be a little difficult sometimes. But uh, this is the Phantom Lightning. This was uh, the only Phantom canister that was made until uh, they switched over ownership to Europro. Um, this would have come out, uh, essentially in around 92 or 3. They, uh, sold them various catalogs and newspapers. Uh, the big thing about these is these are very, very similar to a Dyson DC-02 canister, and I'll show a picture of one right here. Uh, and as you can see, the same basic shape, you know, you had your big wheel and your swooping body and your cyclone and handle and everything like that. The big difference is that you can see really is this, this, this took a HEPA filter, much like, you know, we see with the other Phantom machines. It also had an electric hose and power nozzle, something that Dyson wouldn't come out with for a while, but um, this is just what Phantom wanted. Uh, and that power nozzle also had a height adjustment on the front, but you also had a different cyclone than the, the, the Dyson variant as well. Uh, but otherwise, design-wise, it's very, very similar. Uh, the cool thing about these canisters is you could actually position them on a stair so that you could do your stairs without the thing falling all the way down. So, very cool little machine here. Really, really happy with this one. Um, this I got in on a trade, so I am happy to have another example here. So, all right, so we're going to take a look at one or two more, I think. Actually, yeah, we got two more to look at. So let's get on to the next one. Okay, we are on to the last of the classic Phantoms. This is the Phantom Cyclone XT. This was the essentially the last James Dyson designed Phantom. This would have uh, came out in uh, 2000, 2001 time frame and had the most of the uh, features that you could get on a Phantom upright also was the most expensive that you could get at around uh, $300. And I'll show a newspaper ad for it right here. As you can see, uh, we have headlights, height adjustment, more than the, uh, the other uprights that were introduced. You also had onboard tools, and we'll uh, tilt them down there, see them in there. Uh, of course, HEPA filter, Overall, very, very cool machine. Uh, this also kind of was the beginning of the end for Phantom. Now, Phantom would have gone and on to become more machines and whatnot, but in 2001, they lost their uh, patents with James Dyson and went out of business uh, just because they had a, developed another upright called the Wildcat. which unfortunately uh, kind of was the end for them. So they are no longer around. They did sell the name on, and they uh, were making uh, other machines under the Phantom name and labeling. Uh, they were just made by Europro until about 2005. Uh, and then that's when they essentially became Shark. So, um, but anyways, this is a really, really cool machine. I'm really happy to have this one. This one, like, also another really cool feature, and you'll see it right up here. This is their on switch, right there. This essentially turns on the machine, like normal, but it's a brush roll control as well. So, one side, you're going to have brush roll running, running. The other, just suction so you can do your, uh, your attachments and everything. Now, when, uh, when Phantoms were introduced, they, also, they always came out with a, uh, a how-to video uh, that they would include with the machine. And one cool thing I found about this thing is uh, when they did the how-to on this one, as well as their infomercial, were both filmed in Maui, Hawaii.
their whole big thing was that, you know, you can get all the sand and particulates off the beach, um, which uh, from the designs and everything, you know, it did a very good job for them, but uh, it was just kind of cool. But uh, let's uh, look at one more. All right, so what we're looking at is essentially the beginning of the end for Phantom. Now, this would have been one of their earlier twister uprights. Had really cool big back wheels, as well as this strange dial on the front, I guess to compress and get dust to that. Strange design, but otherwise very similar to the other machines. Kind of sad just because uh, they did lose the patent and uh, effectively Phantom went under in 2005 after Euro Pro kind of changed their uprights enough that they weren't as good as they once were. Now, um, we're also going to look at one more machine. Um, it came out a little bit later. Uh, it's not here. Uh, it's actually Jared's. It's a uh, later twister with twin headlights and whatnot. Um, I'll show a picture of it right here, actually. And it's a pretty cool machine. He got it brand new in box. So um, he was the first one to open it and touch it. It was sold on a home shopping channel. So somebody ordered it and effectively just put it in the closet and never used it. So really cool. So he's going to show a demo on that one. Um, and then uh, we will close it out for today. All right, everybody. Thank you again for joining us today for this little history about phantom vacuum cleaners a really cool brand that came out of canada that uh, unfortunately weren't around as long but essentially they did forward james dyson to bring in his first one the dc07 into the united states um a lot of really cool history with that of course and Maybe we'll do a video on Dyson soon, so who knows. But uh, either way, it was a really fun video to make today. I'm glad you all got a chance to see it. Thank you again to Jared Martinson for um, helping us with this and showing us some cool machines as well. Um, on top of that, I'm going to leave us with a run demo of that 9-amp Kenmore Destiny that he has. Um, it's a really cool machine. Um, I'm really happy that, uh, that he was able to get that one. It's cool to be able to see this kind of history still around. So you guys all have a great day. Enjoy the run demo, and we will talk to you soon, all right?